Bible illiteracy has fluctuated between 70 and 80 percent among the Western body of believers for at least the past three decades. This means that a large majority of Western believers have never read the entire Bible, the collection of inspired books upon which our faith is founded. Shalom. I'm Yaakov, the founder, spiritual leader, and primary teacher of the Beit Malik International Messiah Following Jewish Community. Welcome to Line Upon Line. We're rebooting the Line Upon Line podcast series this season, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to reintroduce you to this teaching series, give you a concise overview of how it's come about, and the ethos behind it. But before I do that, I want to thank those of you who have tuned in regularly in the past and have chosen to continue to utilize this series as a tool in your study of the scriptures. I also want to thank those of you who have continued to partner with us financially. While we don't ask for money, we do appreciate those of you who support us in this way. In addition, I'd like to thank those of you from all over the globe who have emailed, messaged, commented, and shared your support with this ministry. Those of you who have followed the Line Upon Line videos and podcasts in the past are aware that it's a teaching series dedicated to a Messiah essential understanding of Scripture. It's the primary Bible teaching resource of the Beit Malek International Messiah Following Jewish Community and has already been utilized by many throughout the world. We've received positive responses from believers both directly and indirectly connected to our community and are delighted to learn that many are being strengthened in their faith through the teaching we are sharing. If you'd like to know more about the Beth Malak community, we invite you to go to our website at www.bethmalak.com where you can read our faith statement, watch teaching videos, and investigate some of our articles of commentary on Scripture. We understand from Scripture that Messiah Yeshua, Immanuel, God with us, is the Word, essence of God, all existing from before the creation of all things. Therefore, we rightly receive him as the author and goal of Torah. Nevi'im, Ketuvim, Abuita Chadesha, the Bible in its fullness, from Bereshit through Revelation. Which brings me to an explanation of the Line Upon Line series. I'd like to help you better understand what Line Upon Line is about by answering the question, why did the community of leaders of Beth Malek decide to produce Line Upon Line? Here's the answer. We observed that many of those joining our community, both locally and globally, expressed as one of their primary reasons for joining a desire to receive a sound, contextual, spirit-filled teaching of Scripture, something that they have acknowledged is by and large lacking in the Western faith community. On further research, we found that statistically speaking, Bible illiteracy has fluctuated between 70 and 80 percent among the Western body of believers for at least the past three decades. This means that a large majority of Western believers have never read the entire Bible, the collection of inspired books upon which our faith is founded. While we don't rely on the interpretation of statistics alone to direct us, the statistics are nonetheless an affirmation of what our community has observed and experienced to date within the body of faith on both a personal and corporate level. Therefore, encouraged by the teaching of Rav Shaul HaShaliach, commonly known as Paul the Apostle, Paul the Sent One, that we should not forsake the public reading of Scripture 
and being inspired by the Holy Spirit, the living word Yeshua, who dwells in us by grace through faith, we have undertaken to provide this teaching series to both our local and global community. Our hope is that by making Line Upon Line available as an audiovisual podcast, many followers of Yeshua throughout the body of Messiah, both Jews and those of other ethnic and religious backgrounds, will be inspired to rightly divide the word of truth according to the revelation of God's Spirit in Messiah and be encouraged to unite hearing with understanding and in the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to practice right action in their daily walk in Messiah Yeshua Amelech. Bezrat Hashem, with the help of God, we will endeavor to provide weekly episodes that systematically go through books of the Bible and provide written commentary for those who would like to do further study. At the end of each series, we will seek to make the complete commentary of each book studied available for purchase in both digital and hard copy book formats. I'd like to take some time now to briefly explain one of the methods I employ in my study of Scripture in order to give you a more informed understanding of the lens through which I approach the teaching of God's Word. Of course, there is no method that should be employed outside of submission to God in Messiah. We rightly divide the word of truth according to the revelation of the Ruach HaKodesh who teaches us the things of Messiah, thus bringing glory to God. The method I'd like to share with you is the ancient rabbinical approach to scripture interpretation called Pardes. One of our yeshiva students once asked me, is there a biblical support for the rabbinical method Pardes? Here's my answer. Firstly, Pardes is an acronym that describes the traditional rabbinical method of interpretation. Pe represents the Hebrew Peshat from Pashat, meaning surface, and thus refers to the plain meaning. Reish is for remes, a hint at something deeper. Dalit is for drash, to inquire or make a comparative teaching of. And samech is for sod, meaning secret or mystery. All interpretations subsequent to the peshat, the plain meaning, are subject to the plain meaning. This is the first and primary protection against misinterpretation. On its own, the word pardes means orchard or garden and is a reference to paradise used figuratively by the Torah scholars of the Babylonian captivity to refer to the study of Torah. It's important to understand that there is no explicit biblical instruction that gives us a schematic for Bible interpretation. So, if there's no explicit instruction in the Bible regarding pardes, is there any implicit support for the rabbinical method within the texts of the Bible? The short answer is, yes, there is. The Peshat, or plain meaning, is self-explanatory. There's no need to explain to a reader that the book means what it says. Therefore, there's no need to show evidence from the Bible that God intends for us to take it at face value relative to context and figurative, poetic, or metaphorical language. The first mention of the practice of examining the scriptures in an exegetical way is in the book of Ezra, the priest and scribe. Ezra 7.10 reads, For Ezra had set his heart, le drosh, to inquire of the Torah of Adonai, to observe and to teach its statutes and ordinances in Israel. In the text of Ezra, the phrase le drosh means to inquire. It is from the root derash, from which we glean the Hebrew drash. 
This word is used specifically in relation to the Torah and therefore describes a practice of interpretation and an intention to walk according to that interpretation and teach it to others. Rabbinical Judaism calls this halacha, the way we walk. This is the perfect example of what it means to make a drash, or comparative teaching. In addition to this, there is an implicit reference to sod in Psalms. Psalms 25.14 reads, The sod, secret, mystery, of Adonai is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant, binding agreement through cutting. The psalmist David Amelech conveys the idea that those who truly fear Hashem will have his covenant revealed to them in a transcendent, mysterious way. What covenant is he speaking of? I believe that the sod, or secret, revealed here by the Ruach HaKodesh in David's words is the then yet future covenant made in Messiah's blood, Abuit Achadasha, the covenant that is new. In addition to the evidence found in the book of Psalms and the writings of Ezra the priest, as Jews who follow Yeshua, we should first look to him and his disciples for evidence of the use of the rabbinical interpretive method. If neither Yeshua or his Talmudim used pardes, then as disciples of Yeshua, why would we use it? Let's take a look at just a few of the many New Testament examples of the use of pardes. These specific examples are found in the book of Matisyahu, Matthew, the Talmud also known as Levi. As stated earlier, every part of scripture has a plain meaning. Therefore, Peshat, the plain meaning, is the basis for the subsequent methods of interpretation. Now let's look at the second part of the acronym, Remes, Hint. Matthew 2.15 reads, Out of Egypt I called my son. This is a quote from Hoshea, Hosea 11.1, and is being applied to Yeshua by Matisyahu. If we read it to refer to the Peshat or plain meaning of Hosea 11.1, we must interpret it to refer to Israel. However, Matisyahu, the disciple of Yeshua, divinely inspired by God, interprets it as a remez, a hint, which is alluding to the Messianic king as God's son. This is just one of many examples of Matisyahu's use of remez. We note that there is no contradiction to the plain meaning, or peshat, because salvation himself is of Israel. This is the perfect example of the remes, the hint, submitting to the Peshat, the plain meaning, thus validating the remes, the hint. Once again, this is a safeguard against misinterpretation. We now move on to the third part of the acronym, Doash, Inquire. Matthew 18.18 18 reads, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This verse, taken literally and out of context, is often misused by Christians to demand that spiritual powers in the heavenlies submit to them. However, within the context of Matisyahu, Matthew 18, 14 to 18, the Peshat, or plain meaning, refers to the practical application of principles concerning those who are sinning within the body of believers. Thus, the plain meaning indicates a drash, a comparative teaching, concerning the binding and loosing of our actions according to halakha, the way we walk which is yet another rabbinical teaching that Yeshua and his disciples applied to daily life. Finally, we have sod, 
mystery, secret. Matisyahu, or Matthew 26, 28, reads, Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, this is my blood. If the figurative language here were taken literally, it would not only violate the Torah commandment against consuming blood, but along with other verses concerning the eating of Yeshua's flesh, the present text could be understood as teaching cannibalism. This is clearly not what Yeshua intends. Yeshua explains to his disciples that it is the spirit that produces the deeper understanding and that his words are spirit and life. This is evidence of a sud, a mystery, that cannot be gleaned from the pishat, the plain meaning of the text. A concept that is illuminated through spiritual revelation alone and by no other means. This particular sod, or mystery, was to be fully revealed following Yeshua's death and resurrection. So what can we conclude? First, there is no explicit schematic for Bible interpretation within Scripture. And second, pardes is implicit in Scripture. Both Messiah and his disciples employ it. In the next episode, we begin our teaching series on Bereshit, the book of Genesis, with an introduction to this first book of the Torah. If you're tuning in for the first time, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, liking and following our Facebook page, and also following us on whatever other social media platforms you use. In addition to this, if you have friends and family who might be interested, please share this episode with them. Thanks in advance for your support. I hope you can find time to join me for the next episode. Until then, Shalom B'Shem HaMashiach Yeshua Melech. 